Hey everyone, and welcome back to Practically Zero Waste, a podcast for making zero waste living as practical as possible. For 25 years, Peterborough Greenup has been an organization focused on environmental education, sustainability, and stewardship. Today, I talk with store manager Kristen LaRock about Greenup's initiatives in the city, as well as the tools they supply us with to begin swapping out single-use items on a daily basis. So here we go. How did Green Up start, and what's a little bit of the history of it starting? Well, um, the best summary is certainly on our website. Right. That'll give you a really nice step-by-step understanding of how Green Up evolved from mm. Kortha World Issues Center project. You know, it, it became incorporated in the early 1990s under the name of Green Up. We celebrated our 25th anniversary two years ago. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, it was a it's a huge milestone. One part of Green Up that's particularly well known, I think, in the community is Ecology Park. Oh. Oh, right, and yeah. So Ecology Park is currently managed by Vern Bastable, and he is a tree expert. Is that um, like an official title? Perhaps, don't quote me on this, but I believe that he worked as an arborist or with trees quite intensively prior to his work here at Greenup. So, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of managing the ecology park right now. Yeah, so he looks after sourcing Canadian-grown indigenous species of plants that oh. can be sold at the garden market. And he also looks after, you know, tending those plants, tending the gardens, and overseeing some of the programs that take place there. So Ecology Park is open from May to October. Mm-hmm. And so that's spring-summer season. There's lots going on. And so during the early months, during the spring, there's lots of school groups who come through and they have the opportunity to see some of the beehives, um, some of the gardens, and what's excellent about Ecology Park is that it's located right next to Beavermead, and so there's access to the, the waterways. And Right, Beavermead's another another big park in, in hmm. Peterborough, and we have Little Lake, which is attached to that as well, so that mm-hmm. would be such a hands-on place to learn as a group of school kids, right, to come in Absolutely. and just like run around in the woods. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, well, and this is the beauty of what's going on at Ecology Park currently is just erected um, a education structure that, you know, was years in the making and in terms of planning, fundraising, and then finally getting to the build. Basically, this children's education shelter will allow us to host more people and it will offer us a space to store some of our education tools in a way that's secure and, you know, it will be far more weather resistant and vandal proof yeah (laughs) um and that's a good thing yeah Mm -hmm. that's great because then you'll have not only the whole park itself but a specified grounds for taking in classes and students and having learning opportunities and and Mm -hmm. yeah just like building experiences out in nature for them that's wonderful Mm -hmm. absolutely Uh, I can remember going to the ecology park and running around making bird calls in the woods (laughs) that's nice yeah (laughs) yeah but I uh, what other programs do you offer for school groups well so I wonder if that might have been in the context of a earth adventure camp Might so have been. during the the summer months or, or when children are out out of school between july and august we run six weeks six to eight weeks of children's camps which oh. are focused on uh encouraging stewardship among I young, like that. young people that's so, wonderful yeah and there's lots of hands-on learning lots of you know getting in the muck yeah. hunting around for crayfish understanding about you know, the natural ecosystems. and That's so cool. The, sim- the symbiotic relationships of species and plants and invasive species. And actually, I, so I have a five-year-old son, and he was telling me after he attended this camp, he was telling me that he'd learned a new word, and he, the word he had learned was invasive. And he told me what invasive meant. Wow. And uh, he was very adamant that we had to watch out. And we had to try to keep those invasive plants out of our natural habitat. What an opportunity to be able to immerse kids in the the vocabulary of stewardship and protecting your planet mm-hmm. and just being mindful of the world around you and even something like an invasive species not just hey there's garbage in the park I'm gonna pick it up but mm-hmm. like we should not be having that plant but I'm sure there's lots that are in Ontario alone let alone oh, in Canada absolutely are, yeah. uh, one that people are probably very familiar with is the emerald ash borer which right. lives in wood well, so a problem yeah for Lately. sure yeah. Um, anyone who has or stores wood at their cottage, you know, and maybe wants to take it 
home if they have a wood burning fireplace. Yeah. You know, that's generally discouraged. Um, yeah, because it will travel in the wood piles and spread and kill all the other trees. Absolutely, and certainly it's fairly aggressive and so it's less vulnerable to predators. Oh, so it's because it doesn't have any natural ones <laughs> not in natural Canada. Ones. Yeah. That is an awesome spot for kids to be learning other adult programs happening through Ecology Park other than other than the garden market. So the garden market is a great place for hobby gardeners or yeah. professional gardeners to get a hold of plants that are grown in Canada that have been very specifically sourced and have been brought in with, with our environmental mandate in mind. So Green Up as an environmental organization does want to prioritize uh, native plant species and certainly wants to promote sustainable growth in the urban garden as well as elsewhere. But in terms of other adult programs, there are often workshops okay. that take place at Ecology Park. In previous years, there's been a junior beekeeping workshop, yeah, which provides a really good introduction to the ins and outs of beekeeping and allows people to get a taste for the life of an apiary. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they have an apiary on site. Absolutely. There okay. are, uh, in terms of number of hives, I, I don't know, but they're, they have quite a few hives at Ecology Park. Um, and they also have this neat demo station that allows you to see the bees. Whoa, that would be action. cool. Yeah. Like, like a glass side to a <laughs> hive. Absolutely. So you can see the chambers and some filled with honey. The bees in action. Absolutely. That would be really cool. Mm -hmm. And then as part of the garden market, mm -hmm. I think you can get mulch and, and soil and compost and stuff. Is that yeah, a thing? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, mulch available as well as leaf compost. Which oh, okay which we provide as part of our partnership with the city of Peterborough. We're able to acquire that leaf compost and... So that comes from everybody's green waste pickup that mm -hmm. they offer? Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Peterborough doesn't offer municipal compost, like kitchen compost pickup, but they That's do right. offer yard waste pickup. That's right. You can pick up green waste stickers at the Green Up store for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you do with that? You can stick that onto whatever receptacle you may have, maybe a old garbage can. Yeah. And then you don't have to necessarily buy those single-use paper bags that you okay. fill. Mm -hmm. and so then that's composted and you sell that there. You guys don't do any other sort of, people can bring their compost and then it gets turned into soil and stuff. No, that's like way beyond our capacity. Okay. Green Up is a charity. We are funded through several sources. One of them is the Ontario Trillium Fund. Also uh, received some funding from the city of Peterborough, mm -hmm. which has been very supportive of a lot of our efforts in the community. We really appreciate that partnership. Um, and then we also get donations from private donors. So oh. citizens of Peterborough and surrounding area who decide that what we do in the community is worth funding. Those go directly into supporting our programs and supporting the organization as a whole. That's great. When did Green Up start as a store? Basically the store has been at this location for about eight years, but oh, it's been great. in existence for 15. Just different um, locations. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And so at one point, Green Up was uh, in the lower lower level of Cuba Square. Oh, yeah. And so the store was there during that manifestation of Green Up. And then thankfully, when they secured this space, they were able to expand. Yeah, because this location isn't just the store. You also have offices for right. program development. and right. Yeah. I mean, Green Up is made up of several departments. So there's a water department that's focused on flood mitigation Mitigation, water conservation, that's cool. and species protection within the, the context of waterways. And then there's also a department that's focused on healthy active transportation. They're looking at how to make Peterborough more bikeable and walkable, right. yep. more friendly for transit users. And so there was a, for example, recently where classes were taken on, on field trips using the transit system. What? That's cool. Yeah. And Sorry, so rather that's been than, my response to so many things, but genuinely, things. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been such an interesting experience because unless you use transit with your parents, then like as a kid, you're never really going to know yeah. transit. Absolutely. <laughs> and the pains of transit and um, the joys yeah. of transit. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was really an excellent initiative and teachers and principals were supportive and wanted to be on board. So That's that really was good. that was really positive. Um, we also have someone who helps us with our marketing and communications. Right. And her name is Karen Halley and she has been with Green Up for years and years and looks to promote all of the different programs and events mm -hmm. um, in all of the different departments. For instance, right now there's the D Pave project happening right beside No Frills. It's basically an effort in diverting rainwater away from our sewer system and 
rather encouraging it to stay where it falls and nourish plants and vegetation and be of use in that area. That is so cool. Tell mm-hmm. me, like, why why do we need to water this day? This sounds like a silly question. It's a valid question. So basically, when you overload the sewer systems with storm water in addition to private sewage, mm-hmm. eventually it can flood. It can reach capacity and overflow. And when it overflows, what that means is that human waste is entering the water system. It's a huge environmental problem. And it's a, such a good reason to divert it. Yeah, it's a situation you want to avoid. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And so the Deep Have initiative has lifted up asphalt from several spaces around Peterborough. Uh, spaces the... that generally flood. Yeah. It's certainly an initiative that we hope will grow. And in terms of the store, the items that we carry there are ones that we hope will help people live more sustainably on a day-to-day. So we carry a lot of reusable products, Mm -hmm. you know, coffee thermoses, water bottles. Things that replace single-use items. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And our emphasis on zero-waste items has increased sort of in keeping with, I think, a worldwide trend to pay attention to our waste. So one of our biggest sellers in the store is the reusable stainless steel straw. We carry those in several lengths with a cleaning brush and those items I've noticed are are very, very popular. And I wonder why that is. The straw is like the tip of the iceberg. Yes. But I will say that I think it's a neat sort of an entry point. Yes. For folks, and I think that's grand. Uh, the other thing I like about it is that it's it's affordable. So, yes, um, that might can, also be it too. Absolutely, you can hook yourself up with a reusable straw and a cleaning brush for like around five dollars yeah um here at the green up store at least and that seems like a reasonable price to pay yeah i think and it's your gateway item (laughs) into (laughs) yes let's hope zero waste because ideally i'd like to see um one of the big single-use items that kind of drives me up the wall is the single-use coffee cup yes i think that it's it just makes a lot more sense to like encourage people to use their own mugs and we have to change our habits so that we bring it and wash it and And blah 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 yeah and a lot of stores have to change cafes have to change their habits too with a local independent cafe like here in Peterborough, there's Black Honey. I brought my cup there today and they very willingly filled it up with my apple cider. But if I were to bring that to Tim Hortons and ask for anything mm-hmm. in there, unless it's coffee, it is very rare. Like if it's any sort of specialty drink or anything at all, I understand that they have to like have the certain measurements or whatever, right. but they will use a disposable cup to measure out mm. how much and then they will pour it into my travel mug mm. and throw that in the garbage. So I just like, mm. like it's not just people too. Like obviously big corporations have to just wrap their minds around like, how to avoid that single face thing. But you're Absolutely. right, it's so coffee cups. Yeah. Do you guys offer that sort of thing in the store? Tons of reusable thermoses. Um, we also have tumblers, like an insulated tumbler that looks a bit more like a coffee cup. Oh, okay. Um, so it's got less of that heavy duty travel stainless mode. steel thermos you know yeah. <laughs> it's it looks like a something you could happily put on your desk yeah. and it's aesthetically beautiful mm-hmm. and all this jazz so. mm-hmm. other things that are important in encouraging people to go absolutely low waste because for a lot of people it's not all about being eco-friendly it's mm-hmm. also about what is aesthetically pleasing because you could absolutely. also just bring a mug from a secondhand store or from the back of your cupboard or something like that mm-hmm. to use over absolutely. and over again but if that's what gets you into zero waste then do it yeah yeah oh gosh absolutely there's sort of a bunch of ways to to start yeah exactly another one of the items that i'm really hopeful will will really take off and become more widely used is the reusable produce bag oh okay um, and we carry those they're made by a canadian company called credo they're outside of montreal mm-hmm. and they make a great organic cotton mesh bag that right, yes. you can see your veggies through. You can take them to, through the till with no trouble to the cashier. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. helpful having them be the mesh, and so that mm-hmm. uh, makes them see through, mm-hmm. as opposed to using like a cotton bulk bag. It's a matter of when I bring those through the till at the grocery store, the cashier will open them up and say, okay, how many kiwis are in this bag or I can't that like what is in this bag I can't see what's in there yeah um and so having the the, the mesh bags are mm-hmm. really helpful absolutely yeah. but you guys also carry a brand called Don the Sack do mm-hmm. they have produce bags as well or um not that I've seen it available but what we get from them is their selection of bread bags and bulk bags right and those are 
you know, a solid cotton, mm -hmm. suitable for carrying, you know, rice, beans, flour, and I've used them at the box store and at the main ingredient yeah. with no trouble at all. The, the biggest caveat with using a bulk bag or your own jar is that you have to check in with them before you fill it. Yes. You want to get that thing weighed, you want to find out the tear, yeah. and then that amount can be subtracted off your, mm -hmm. your total at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with the cotton bags, a good idea is to have them weigh the bag. Mm -hmm. When you first arrive, you mm -hmm. have them weigh all of your bags and jars, and then just take a pen or a marker or anything a little bit more permanent and mm -hmm. write that on there the first time. And then every other time, you just go ahead and they subtract the tear, and it's the same every time. So mm -hmm. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. The main ingredient is awesome for that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. The main ingredient is a, a bulk store that's in Peterborough, but it's independently owned, as opposed to supporting Bulk Barn, which is also a really great resource in Canada. Having the having the main ingredient in other local shops like that are really good. Do you guys partner with other stores or groups in the city like the main ingredient at all? Or I would say less so with businesses and okay. more with other charitable organizations. Okay, like what? Um, so, for example, in the store, we actually carry products made by not-for-profit groups like the Friends of Hope Mills. They are, you know, a, a group of volunteers who contribute their time to restoring and maintaining the Hope Mill, which is out on, out in Keene, Ontario. Basically, the volunteers also use some of the machinery that, that is there at the Hope Mill to make beautiful cutting boards. Cool. There's also a volunteer there who, who makes these beautiful French rolling pins. They're like a single piece Amazing. of wood. Yeah. And, you know, cheese boards, children's toys, all kinds of things out of wood. Okay, as and, a way of supporting their own restoration projects and stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so we sell their products here at the Greenup store. The proceeds from those sales support both Greenup and Hope Mill. So that's a really valuable partnership. We mm -hmm. also carry um, products that are made by the Sewing Collective. They're part of the new Canadian Centre. The Sewing Collective is made up of newcomer women who are perhaps learning English for the first time. And so there's a space for them to connect with other women, connect with members of the community, and perfect their sewing skills. So they produce things like pot holders, aprons, yeah. like all kinds of beautiful hand-sewn items that are, are useful in everyday life. They, they make a, an excellent alternative to paper towels. It's like a hanging um, set of six um, double-sided like machine. terry cloth like, like terry cloth yeah paper towel alternatives yeah they're and, just kind of like but yeah you sort of take one as you need it yeah and they're totally washable and then reusable mm -hmm. so that's a neat thing and they're using for the most part donated or upcycled fabrics oh, that's awesome so it's wonderful to have that partnership they've emphasized making reusable items that really fall in line with the store's efforts right to encourage yeah. a zero waste lifestyle as much as possible another great partnership i should i oh, should mention on, yeah is um the Brain Injury Association of Peterborough Region. Yeah. The members of that organization create these beautiful handmade wooden decor items. So they're using dock board or upcycled two by fours. Yeah. And they make these beautiful um, tree ornaments and, and welcome signs okay, closer so to Christmas. And so, and so that again touches on the importance of branches of the government in supporting some of the work of not-for-profits. In some ways, not-for-profits or charities are able to meet specific needs in a community in a way that might be harder for larger organizations yeah, and departments. That's true. And so Greenup has really taken taken in a lot of citizen input into, you know, what people would love to see in their neighborhoods or what people would like to see in terms of sustainable transportation okay. infrastructure. Yeah. And I think that that citizen involvement is very important and, and it's neat that Greenup can be a bit of a liaison between citizens and uh, larger efforts, yeah. you know. Do you find that really effective, being able to work with community members and citizens and all these not-for-profit groups? Does that help you to reach outside of the kind of hippy-dippy circle that are maybe more likely mm -hmm. to come into your store in the first place? Yeah, I think that the Green Up store has gained popular appeal in Peterborough because waste reduction, climate change awareness, environmentalism generally, I believe, have become more commonplace. 
and more widespread, and so I don't think that there's any more a demographic that represents the environmentalist. And I think it's um, it's really interesting to me, you know, as someone who looks at our customer base, and what I see is that there's great diversity in, in the customers who come through. Yeah. And certainly I see a lot of owners of small businesses. I see young professionals, and I see students. I see, you know, grandmothers and grandfathers. Right, yeah. You know? Like, you've got a lot of diversity coming in the store. Absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and, and they're all here for probably different products. Products, right? Absolutely. And I think because we have zero waste lunch stuff, we get lots of parents in who are interested in, you know, making their lunch packing situation a bit easier. Yeah. A bit more waste free. And so we carry something called Planet Box. And oh, yeah. It's a product that stainless steel bento style container with a lid that it closes shut. It's easy for kids to get in and out of. Right. Easy for them to see what they like, mm-hmm. eat, eat it all up, and then put it away themselves. It's a neat thing to carry. It's a premium product, I would say. In some ways, it's not, you know, priced at $75. It might not be the most accessible mm-hmm. piece of equipment that someone wanting to move towards zero waste lifestyles might Right, that's not your towards. entry level. Yeah. Like, once you know the longevity of a product that you're getting into and, mm-hmm. and quality and, and and the usefulness of something for then sure you're more willing to invest for sure yeah and that, to say nothing of the fact that for some uh 75 dollars for anything is totally out of reach regardless of its value or longevity and durability mm-hmm. so there's quite a variety of other stainless steel containers yeah. that can be used in the same way yeah we certainly want people to have a range of products available to them yeah, exactly. um, and then choose what's you know within their budget because um ultimately environmentalism and living a waste-free lifestyle should not I, have a price tag. It sh- it shouldn't be only for the you know the middle and upper classes, and, and yeah. we have to work to make it accessible. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. And there are so many ways that you can do all of that with your plastic Tupperware instead of yep. using the fancier product. And I know that there's value to both and and supporting mm-hmm. like even if you could use your own leftover plastic containers, or Tupperwares, or anything mm-hmm. like that at home, mm-hmm. supporting an initiative like green up could be another reason that you would go ahead and make this purchase anyway if you wouldn't otherwise Mm -hmm. normally do that sort of thing. So there there are so many reasons to invest in these products and also invest in the groups that are putting these products out there. Yeah, I mean, that touches on the the point that like all sales that happen at the Green Up store, that happen at Ecology Park at the Garden Market, they all go into supporting the work of Green Up generally as an organization as a whole. So it's a neat way to generate funds in order to keep doing our work in Peterborough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You have some items that you sell in bulk here. Tell me about that. Okay. We started pursuing the idea of carrying bulk products last year. Okay. It all came together with one of our companies that currently supplies us with shampoos and conditioner. And that company is called Annika. They're outside of Montreal. And they are a plant-based, you know, self-care product company that came out of a genuine desire by the founder to have salon quality products Mm. that weren't full of parabens. Yes. Um, yeah. And surfactants and all the dirty dozen. So we carry Annika shampoo and conditioner in the citrus and golden seal scent. There is a chance that we might expand that to include other scent profiles that mm-hmm. they offer. They do a, a really beautiful like lavender and angelica scent or something like yeah. that. I think I had that one for a little while. Yeah, that's a that's lovely. Um, and then there's also a cedar wood. Yes. Which yeah. uh, is super popular. And then another thing we carry in bulk is uh, Down East liquid laundry detergent and dishwashing liquid. Okay, that's the name brand, Down East. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Down East is uh, is a company that operates and is based out of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Okay. But of course, we get ours from a distributor closer to Peterborough. Okay. After a lot of discussion with with that particular supplier, I was able to figure out a way for us to get in twenty liter jugs of dishwashing liquid and laundry liquid. Amazing. And that offered us, you know, the opportunity to offer customers that item in bulk. That item in bulk. Yeah. Yeah. When you buy 500 milliliters of the Annika shampoo Mm -hmm. in the original bottle, Mm -hmm. the cost is a little bit more than if you brought 
that 500 milliliter bottle empty or anything that would hold 500 milliliters mm -hmm. and refilled it bulk. Absolutely. It's a savings of six dollars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's, great. It's significant. That's a really good reason to do it. There's an environmental benefit to choosing bulk. There's and then there's an economic as well. Okay. I'm so yeah. glad that that not not even just the same price, but significantly less because that's yeah. a really big incentive for people. Yeah. I mean, our guidelines around what we will fill up, it's really quite simple. We don't have a scale, so we can't weigh your container to know how much it is. So we ask that you bring in a container that says how much it holds right. and we will fill it and we can adjust the price based on what you bring in. So I've okay. had someone bring in a, a one liter bottle that they want full of shampoo. And so we, we do that for them. And That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what else would make sense to carry in bulk. Do you have anything else that's kind of lined up product wise? You don't sell food. There's nothing dry goods or anything that you would need to sell. No, um, I feel like that's covered right now. It's covered. Yeah. There's lots of other people doing it, but Absolutely. a lot of bulk food stores don't sell bulk soap. And yes. so being able to come here for your soap or shampoo or conditioner is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the one thing, you know, I've sort of thought about is, oh, it'd be nice to have bulk all-purpose cleaner. Oh, it would be really nice okay. to have bulk, yeah. you know, body wash. But in my opinion, I actually feel that the, the liquid dish detergent can be... Be an all-purpose cleaner. Can be an all-purpose cleaner. Uh, the I mean, shampoo could be body wash. Absolutely. I mean, the Less conditioner products. I've used for shaving oh, for years, nice. and it's great. Nice. <laughs> so, like, there's lots of ways to make these items that are sold as a single function mm -hmm. item into multifunctional yeah. things. Yes, absolutely. I mean, soap is soap. <laughs> Ultimately, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's funny that we add so much other stuff to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's mostly some of the stuff we add is those additives create the satisfying lather. Yes. Yeah. Um, Same with toothpaste, right? It feels weird to have a natural toothpaste that doesn't foam, but mm -hmm. you guys actually carry toothpaste and toothbrushes mm -hmm. as well? Yeah, yeah, we carry the bamboo toothbrushes for children and adults. Okay. So like shorter, smaller. Yeah. And then we'll carry green beaver toothpaste in okay. all kinds of fun flavors like cilantro mint, which is my personal favorite. Oh, for the cilantro haters, that sounds oh, like a nightmare. No. And then we also carry zesty orange and frosty oh, nice. mint. Yes. Mint and some more conventional flavors as well. <laughs> Um, that's mm -hmm. good. And then do you have any sort of other natural self-care products? So we have and like low waste mm -hmm. products um, too? Um, we carry shampoo bars made by um, Simply Natural Canada. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Sherry La Massiere. Oh, I'm saying that wrong. That's good. Okay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so Simply Natural Canada, that shampoo bar works great. That's awesome. It's a, it's a really good plastic-free alternative. Yeah. And it comes honestly as like a bare okay. bar of soap. Yeah. Um, Sometimes, you know, I've had a customer who buys a stainless steel container to put her, her soap in. Yeah. And, you know, she told me she was headed camping and yeah. this was going to be her solution. That's smart. And, uh, yeah, or if you're traveling good. on a plane or something like that, then you don't have to worry about liquids. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, I can shower anywhere I want. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have that kind of product around. That's good. She has her items here at Green Up on consignment. So what that means is basically, you know, when she sells something, some of that cost goes to Green Up, some of it goes to her. Yeah. And ultimately everybody's very, very happy. Yes. With that arrangement. So that's how most of your local vendors work or most of your vendors in general work, right? Or consignment? Yeah. 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 And basically you can tell that something is consignment uh, and produced locally because on our price tags we'll have it highlighted in pink and that indicates to the buyer that you know this one is made locally okay mm -hmm. well that's really nice mm -hmm. and then most of our suppliers are you know canadian-based companies mm -hmm. who are you know maybe have an environmental mandate like planet box does okay. um, they have to fall in line with our efforts as an environmental organization, yeah. we are selective in choosing which things come into the store. Well, that's so good. Mm -hmm. I saw deodorant in cardboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's um, also a consigner who is based out of Bon Echo okay. sort of area, and she has found great packaging for her deodorant. It's completely compostable. And it's not, cardboard. Not just like a biodegradable plastic product. It's that's actually right. just cardboard tube. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, and the funny thing about biodegradable plastic, yes. um, which perhaps you've even touched on in your sh in your show, is Not that yet. Go on. oh, it's oh, this is juicy. This is one of my <sighs> favorite fun facts. Oh, is, good. Um, but it's also, it exposes a bit of deceptiveness. Unfortunately, a lot of biodegradable plastics are corn based and corn requires sunlight to biodegrade. 
and most people's composters have a lid or most, will get covered yeah. by other material and they will not biodegrade. Be, they will not be biodegrading. Most people aren't putting biodegradable products and this is just a biodegradable product very often will end up in a garbage can in anyway. a black plastic trash bag mm -hmm. and that's not going to biodegrade in a trash bag either yeah absolutely <laughs> because of its need for direct sunlight so i didn't know that fun fact that is so cool <laughs> yeah so i get a lot of people asking like hey do you have a, a bin liner for my composter and i say no and i'll tell you why i don't carry them and i tell them about this yeah. corn thing yeah um i i and I say, what I think makes a lot more sense is, you know, using scrap paper, newspaper, newspaper, or paper bags from paper bags from your mushroom purchase at the market, or just put it in your bucket and wash the bucket. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, <laughs> which is a little grosser, but like my bucket holds the smell in there, so yeah. it holds the smell in, and then you dump it, and then you wash it, and then you refill it and repeat. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it can be very simple, right? Yeah. And it's funny to me how many things we buy to throw out. What a, yes. Yeah. yeah. What a, yeah. I know. <laughs> there was this funny thing that I think, some okay. comedy thing, did a little while back, a product that was, um, maybe it was Rick Mercer, that was pre-soiled paper towels. So you just buy it and it's already got stains all over it. It's already been used. And Hilarious. then you just throw it directly in the garbage. It skips the step of actually having to use it. Like it's so much wow. more convenient for everybody to do this. Total Hilarious. joke, whoever the comedian was. It makes your heart hurt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just gosh. like, come on. Like, yeah. it is funny, but it's also very so real that you're buying things just to throw them away. Mm -hmm within yeah. three seconds. Same with like all of the produce bags at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, to continue this rant. Yeah, yeah well, but, yeah. so I, I was reading up on these produce bags and, you know, they take one second to manufacture. They're used for roughly 30 minutes at most. And mm -hmm. then they take 200 to 600 years to biodegrade. So, I mean, it's, Ow. it's oh like the gosh. ratio is so unreal. <laughs> Well, let's wrap this up then. Is there anyone in the zero waste community that is inspiring you lately or things that are getting you excited about low waste initiatives that are happening? Well, I mean, in terms of resources I've accessed at, at this stage, I mean, I still have a lot of research ahead of me, a lot of work to do, you know, at my own household level. But I really like B. Johnson's yes. uh, Zero Waste Home. We sell it here at the Green Up store, okay. and I found out about it through her blog. Yeah. Um, she's got a great online presence as well mm -hmm. for people who don't want to buy a book. Yeah. You know, made of paper resources. I Yeah, I like her style of writing. I liked the way that she broke down All areas of my home and, yeah. Yeah, and, and offered solutions for every item I might have in there that is wasteful and unnecessary. So yeah. I like the idea of simplifying. I like how it can achieve two things, you know, more organization and it can also achieve, you that's know, an waste. environmental uh, effort as well. Yeah. So Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thanks, sitting down with me and taking so much of your day. And I'm glad that uh, it worked out to be able to talk together. Today. Yeah. Thanks so much, Elspeth. Yeah. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Green Up. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. If you'd like to learn more about GreenUp and get involved in their programs, you can check out their website, greenup.on.ca, or find them on social media at PTBO GreenUp. I hope this week's episode helps us to pause as we shop and think, am I buying this to throw it away? A little bit of food for thought. Have a great week, everyone, and talk to you soon.